All right, guys, automated garage back today, and we've got a full house. We got two six sevens in here and two seven threes. Front end work on this one. Uh, the one right behind me here is getting one injector. This is Lee's truck. Pretty sure it's injector harness. We haven't got into that yet. And then we got this one. I'm gonna turn you around here. It's a 2020 with, uh, I believe it's got around 120,000 miles on it, but uh, was supposedly diagnosed as needing a fuel system before it came here. This is warranty work through a, uh, I guess third party is what you call it, warranty company. So we're having to prove the fact that it needs a fuel system. So the easiest way to 100% prove that other than hooking the computer up and see that it's not making high pressure fuel is to pull that FCA valve. So I'm gonna put, show y'all real quick on the uh, newer 6.7s here that does not have the plastic intake <clears throat> like 11 through 16 had, uh, but show y'all how to uh, pull that off, get your FCA out, and see if you do or do not have metal on it. All right, start with a cat's paw and get all your little connectors you need to pry off right here, right here on your intake, right here on your intake. Unplug this, unplug this, just so you're not stretching any wires. So let me get all those popped off and disconnected. All right, so we undid our Christmas tree right here and we took the Christmas tree off of the stud right down there where the intake bolted down. So now we're gonna unplug the intake, this right here off the intake so that we won't be pulling on that. We're gonna tuck it over here out of the way. Uh, unplugged this, undid the Christmas tree that was right there, popped the ring right here, the locking ring, and slid that loose. So now we can work on unbolting the two bolts right here for your dipstick. You got, they're both 10 millimeters here. And you got a 10 millimeter nut right here. So I'm gonna get those loose and then we're gonna jump on our 10 millimeters that hold the upper intake down and the eight millimeters that are for our EGR right here. So we'll get this tube out of the way. You don't have to worry about unplugging this. You can just leave it plugged in and set it over out of the way. All right, took our air intake tube off here, uh, two eight millimeters on that. We got our EGR just laying over here right now because it's gonna be easier to get to the plug here shortly. Um, what else have I done? Dipsticks out of the way, which is the 10 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter bolt. Now we're gonna work on upper intake bolts, 10 millimeter. And then you have a variety of eights and tens back here. So this is a 10 millimeter stud right there. Um, so you're just gonna need an eight and a 10 millimeter. And uh, you're probably gonna have to use a little variety of a lot of times I use my quarter inch ratchet with a very short extension on the back side. Just makes it easier because the electric ratchet does not fit underneath here that well. So I'm gonna get all these loose, then we pull the upper intake off, and then we'll work on the lower. We got our upper intake loose. And what you gotta do on your exhaust back pressure sensor right here, it's got that bracket that I have flipped up. It was on that stud right there to the left, which makes it really hard to get to that one eight millimeter. So I took the uh, nut off of that stud, flipped the bracket up. You can get to that. So then I've got all the four loose on this side, all the four loose on this side, and our 10 millimeter that's right here. So now you can see the whole upper intake is loose. So I'm gonna pull this out and then we'll do what we gotta do to get the lower off and then we'll pull our FCA. And once you raise it up, you can unplug the plug right here on your throttle body. It does have a red safety tab. So flip the red safety tab, squeeze it and pull it off. So now with the upper intake all unbolted, you need to remove your fuel filter, just do all your quick connects, twist it, pull it out. Now you take the canister out for your fuel filter that holds it so that you can get swing this side of the intake out to start clearing this portion here, otherwise you're not gonna get Here's it Here's your fuel filter housing, holder, whatever you'll call it, mount right there, and there's all the bolts that go in it. All right, upper intake's off. <clears throat> there it is. The bolts do come out if you want them to come out. They got these little retainers that kind of hold them in there, but there they all are. Still in the intake. So now, we got to pull our lower intake and then we can get to our FCA that is right there. I mean, technically, I guess if you were a contortionist, you can maybe pull it out right now, but it's gonna be easier getting the lower intake off. All right, so disconnect your CCV hose here. Pull this little rubber thing back. You can see the tabs in there, how they lock. I just take a pick and I kind of work them one at a time and you'll be able to twist this around and then just pull back, don't break it. This, as they get older, gets brittle. So don't break that either, you'll be replacing it. All right, so you got your two 10 millimeters right there. 
you got your band clamp going to the turbo, which is a seven millimeter on these. And you gotta unplug this right here on the bottom. All right, we got our lower intake removed. We got our FCA unplugged. We got our T20 Torx, cause you got a bolt on each side of it there. I can get the light to show you. This backside's a little bit tight to get to, but I'm gonna undo both of those. We'll pull it out and take a look at it. All right, we have both of our bolts out of our FCA now. Now you just wiggle and pull. And you can see, so this is not, let me set this down, just get my light where you can see. You can see it's not just absolutely covered in metal like they are sometimes, but there's metal on it. And if you look down in the hole, you can see the metal down in there and the metal that came out with the diesel fuel when I pulled it out there. So definitely needs a pump and this CP4 has done what it's good at and that's failing. So guys, just a quick video on showing you how, if you're wondering, oh man, do I have to have a CP4 pump? Even if you don't have a computer and a scanner to sit there and look at your high pressure fuel and see if you are or are not making high pressure fuel. Break that down to there, pull your FCA and see if you got metal down in it. Usually it looks worse than that, um, but it's not supposed to be metal in there and there's metal in it. So anyways, it's Automated Garage signing out. Y'all check out our other content on the channel here. A whole lot of power stroke and forward stuff and uh, other things thrown in here on occasion. Check us out at Facebook and Instagram. Also, uh, if this channel has helped you out on saving some money, diagnosing your truck, fixing it yourself, whatever, or you just wanna help support content here on the channel, consider visiting our Patreon, becoming a member of that. We have some behind the scenes stuff, do some giveaways, stuff like that. So we appreciate y'all watching. It's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.